this is what we're talking about today, okay? A couple of things, a couple of quick announcements. Okay, Color of Charity. This is the big thing going on. All of you guys already know about this. Right now, Darkest Dungeon is heavily saturated with major streamers competing on a dev save file that is allowing them to compete for as many kills as possible in the endless mode. We will be starting today in a new base game on Darkest Difficulty week one. We don't get the dev save file, so we're not gonna be competing on that stuff yet, but we're gonna move into it and see all the class changes, see the new interface, the new maps, all that stuff, and ramp into moving into the farmstead pretty quick like, okay? Claire, how are you today? Claire, we're gonna talk about you in a second a little bit as well. By the way, here are the patch notes, which we're gonna look over now. These are written by Claire DeLoon. Guys, we're gonna check this out. We're gonna take a minute here and just look at some of the basics before we move in to get a little bit of an understanding because we are moving out of PBD back to base DD, but now into a new expansion that has changed a lot of stuff, which is really, really exciting. A comprehensive look through all classes in game since it has been some time since we previously did so. Related to that, we also wanted to assess combat as a whole, any general balance adjustments we could make to improve the game. In making these changes, consulted extensively with members of the Darkest Dungeon player community, and ultimately went through over three complete rounds of changes, playtesting, fierce debates. Special thanks to Marvin Sale and Claire DeLune for their assistance with this update, in particular with class and trinket adjustments. Guys, we have to take a minute just to appreciate the fact that Claire has had an idea in her head for a while uh, about making trinkets more interesting in this game, and now that's in the game. And that is really freaking cool. I cannot wait to see this, Claire. They were the source of many ideas and also provided endless enthusiasm for stress testing har har the changes themselves. I cannot wait, I cannot wait. Claire has also, uh, Claire was also instrumental in compiling the final change list by referencing things against the live game. Thanks for saving me some work. How badass is that? That just, there's nothing, I could not be more proud of having you guys as a member of this community. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That is so freaking cool. Every class, every class's combat camping skills have been examined and refined, looking for weak or questionable skills or correcting balance issues. It's important to us that each class has a role or roles that make them useful. Our goal is never to make each class equally useful in each situation. Rip Houndmaster. Uh, as long as there is a moment in the game where you think, I really want this class for this situation, that's a win in our eyes. I love that. New mechanic crit buffs. This is, gets really interesting here. Uh, this is an all new addition. Now when your hero lands a critical hit, it will proc a temporary self buff that is thematically tied to the class. For example, the Plague Doctor will get a boost to Blight Chance percentage, whereas the Vestal will get a boost to Heal Skills. That is freaking interesting. Uh, I love, I, I cannot wait to see uh, the way that battles are going to swing if you land a crit and then get a little bit of an extra buff. That seems pretty neat. Virtues can expire. When a hero becomes virtued, their stress drops significantly. If their stress manages to climb to a full 200, the virtue will go away and the hero will find themselves unvirtued with zero stress again. Effectively saying you cannot just be a stress sponge if you virtue, correct? That is the idea. You're no longer just stress immune if you virtue in this game. You will actually go to 200 and lose the virtue, which is really significant. Previously, virtues couldn't expire in this way. We wanted to add a small amount of pressure to still manage the stress on that hero even when virtued. Practically, this should only really affect endless mode in Color of Madness DLC, but it is possible now that you might lose a virtue during this, the course of a quest if you aren't paying attention to the hero's stress. I like that. I think that is interesting. Um, that changes how we feel about uh, stress immunity in a big way and stalling. All right, we're almost done here. Always hit threshold change from 90 to 95. This one is deep under the hood, but the current always hit cutoff is 90%. If you guys don't understand what that means, if you get your accuracy up to 90%, it means a guaranteed hit in Darkest Dungeon. What they're saying now is that this is up to 95% now. Stuns. This is this is the big deal, right? Stuns, stuns can at some times break the game and are the source of much of the stalling and abuse meta. Let's just repeat that real quick. Stuns can at times break the game and are the source of much of the stalling and abuse meta. 
So there you go. Uh, stun chance and speed become the best stats in the game to stack for combat as pure denial tactic. The stun recovery buff that is granted to combatants after being stunned once was increased to further help prevent successive stuns. So stuns are less powerful, less effective now than they were before. They're probably still close to being... I would guess that the efficacy hasn't changed much other than the fact that you can't spam it. Additional logic has been added to try to better detect when players are stalling. <laughs> Darkest Dungeon is a, okay, intentionally keeping weak monsters alive to heal up while they struggle. Darkest Dungeon is a world of constant peril and mortality. Toying with monsters is against our philosophy of what an adventurer would do when the threat of death is ever constant. Yeah? I'm loving it. I love it. Right off the bat, I'm loving it. Scouting. As a whole, we had to nerf scouting buffs and chances a fair bit as it was overtuned and allowing players to reliably avoid many counters. We want scouting to be a great benefit, but not quite as powerful, powerful as before. Finally, monster AI improvements, monster power scaling. Veteran monsters will now have slightly less HP and DoD, but slightly increased damage and crit. Okay. I don't want to get into too much here. Okay, so heroes... Abomination can now party with religious heroes. What? Okay. Can now party with religious heroes. So that was, uh, if you guys, if you guys ever saw my interview with, uh, SSJDK, uh, that was his primary complaint was that you can't play certain characters with other characters because of their lore background, because of their religiosity. So now the Abom can party with religious heroes, which means we're going to see a lot of new uh, combinations of characters. It's no longer just the occultist as a healer, for example, right? So that's pretty insane. Highwayman, Houndmaster, what did they do to my Houndy? 20% bleed chance on crit. Blackjack stun chance reduced by 15%. Okay, that always seemed really powerful. Our illustrious champion returns. Welcome home. Sell! Target whistle, cry havoc, and lick wounds are considered stalling moves. Okay, so there's good, there's a classification of stalling moves now in the game, which is amazing. Release the hound scouting chance is 50 to 30%, a 20% drop now on the scouting chance. Uh, this is amazing. This is like everything we've been talking about in PBD. Everything we've been talking about the balance of these classes has been addressed. It is so freaking amazing. Like, okay, let's zoom in on the flag and then we're getting into this. Punish can no longer reach rank three. <laughs> um, that, you guys, is one of the biggest standouts from the pitch black dungeon flag to the base game flag that we've always known, right? The fact that the flag can be taken on, say, the hag boss and reach rank three with punish. Uh, can't do that anymore. That was a PBD idea. That's amazing. And if we just take that into consideration for a second, stun meta, uh, anti-stall, uh, crits, trinkets, um, I, I don't know about you. I mean, uh, guys, I, I have to say this feels like Darkest Dungeon Red Hook Studios really took a serious note from the player community about what the player community was tired of, what they thought was too strong, what they thought was abusing the game a little bit and decided to make it a little bit fresh, decided to change it up a little bit. It's not necessarily a lot of what PBD was, but it's some of it, and that's pretty damn cool. Good but stuff, you guys. Good stuff. Really, really cool. Easy now. All right, let's rock. Let's see if we can get into this. Let me just make a quick disclaimer. If you're new to the channel, what we have been doing for about the last 10 months on this channel is playing mostly modded content, specifically Pitch Black Dungeon, okay? Which is very, very difficult, very rewarding, but also really completely different in terms of economy, provisions, and all that stuff. I've beaten the game uh, on Radiant, and then we went right into super nasty, painful, brutal, pitch black dungeon. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> if you're looking for super high tier play... I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> that's exactly right. The new map. The of madness and morbidity. Your work begins. So sick. So we got the hamlet down here, the farmstead here. We still have the, uh, the sort of, the diamond-shaped, uh, Ruins Cove, Warren's Weald, and then we have the courtyard over here now. So as you said, the courtyard is no longer in the sky. It actually feels like it's got a place over here, which is kind of cool. This is really exciting. This really excites me. Uh, Luminous. Luminous Quirk, plus two speed and five dodge. I don't recognize that. Has it just been too long? Cove Tactician, Wield Phobe, 
Um, what did we get here? Scattering is minus damage on range skills, and then self-worship. Plus five, okay. Not the worst thing in the world. What better laboratory than the blood-soaked battlefield? Kick the habit 17. I will do my best, ladies and gentlemen, not to kill you early off. Gold. Later. In blood. Okay. <laughs> shard dust. It requires three shards to buy. I'm assuming. Used to tap into otherworldly power, but beware its other effects. Cannot be used while virtuous. That is freaking interesting. Second shovel for the chest. Yeah. A handsome reward for a task well performed. I have one key for the chest. I'm going to be guys, I'm going to be looking for affixes all night, by the way. I'm just going to be mousing over for affixes constantly. AWS, good to see you, my friend. Definitely going better. Uh, it's going better than last week. Last week I was really sick, but I'm doing a lot better. Thank you for asking. Last week I was so sick I couldn't, I couldn't wear a headset because my, uh, m the muscles of my neck were so weak. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. We got another shovel too. Sucks. Glad to see you. Uh, glad to see you. Seem to be getting better. Yeah, thank you. I'm gonna, uh, I have a pretty large, a pretty large, a pretty serious doctor's appointment in Denver, uh, this week too on Thursday. So I'll probably be off Thursday. Even the cold stone seems bent on preventing passage. Um, but that will confirm a lot of things for us, which I think will be, which will be good news or at least some form of treatment for me, which will be a lot more helpful. But thank you for saying that. So grape shot applies plus crits receive debuff on the enemies. Really? Not if it misses. Uh, do we shuffle you back or do we just do we just slam you? Let's go ahead and shuffle you forward. Good luck with the doctor. Thank you, Lyth. Appreciate it. Uh, this will be my sixth time seeing a neurologist at the Anschutz Hospital in Denver, which is a very like difficult place to get in. Uh, the last five times they've not been able to find anything that they can help me with. Um, but my symptoms are really weird, and they're thinking now that it might be a disease called myasthenia gravis, which is where your brain does not produce acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter that energizes and powers your muscles and body. So that might be why my muscles feel so weak and why I'm so tired all the time. The problem is it really comes and goes for me, which is very, very frustrating. And uh, it makes keeping like a normal stream schedule very difficult. And so I finally just had to take, you know, the week off last week and just really recuperate. But I'm tired of doing that. So, uh, you know, it's just a, it's an ongoing thing. You have stun resist. Let's go here. Beautiful. This is cool. The new animation effect is kind of cool. Slowly, gently. This is how a life is taken. So what is Vapor's going to do for us here? 25 20% damage in 3 speed, which is not bad. 4 damage in dead. Okay. Wait a minute. Must says that shrapnel's effect. They stole my shrapnel's frag. <laughs> That's awesome. Continue the onslaught. I'm gonna send Red Hook a case, a cease and desist. <laughs> Cho says it was Claire's idea, Musk. She had it done in her mid. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Doom says kill corpse. Yeah, we're still we're in vanilla. We're playing. We Pitch Black Dungeon is is uh, is not updated for COM guys, and it may not be. So uh, corpse mechanics, affix, affixes. Mini boss summons, all the stuff we've been pumped for is out the window for a little bit, for the time being. Uh, for farmstead, resolve one to two is required. Okay, we'll get there as soon as we can. We're gonna grind fast, I think. 
I think I just threw stuns at something that had stun resist. Maybe not. Back to the pit. Mmm, sure. Boy, the money is just thrown at you in base game, isn't it? That's going to be interesting to feel the economy this time around, too. I feel like 1750 gold is basically what you take home from an entire dungeon in PvD, yeah? Uh, is there any value in going down here for a little bit more loot? Probably not. I can't remember. I, it's been so long since I've done this, um, this introductory one. The base game, like, usually what we've, we've done, I think the last four intro quests we've done have all been the pitch black dungeon intro where they just feed you all the journals, right? Do we want to do this again? I just, uh, so here's the thing. I'm wondering now if I should be incentivized to grape shot more often because it feels like we typically don't use it. It's good. Thank you, Gaunter. Let's do it. Yeah, Grape Shot is still ass, says Poke. That's kind of my thought, too. Woo! Poke says, uh, like, wow, you crit on one more attack out of 25. The debuff gives a lot more crits. Okay. 4%'s not worth it. I wonder if it scales fairly well. Boy, not killing corpses is gonna be a change here. Do we heal you? What are you at? Four and three, you're dead. Uh, I can't stun back here. AoE heal is one to two. I think that I think I probably should have healed her though, because she's gonna get sniped again, most likely. Right? Maybe not. Maybe if we get the kill here. Beautiful. <laughs> is Grape Shot still new bait? Find out later today, Kappa. Nice lay. Anya Joe with the deadly hits. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. Now we're talking. I can't pop this. <laughs> the de stress. Um, let's do that then. Here, here, here. He said nice lay. Yes. <laughs> I guess we do so. Not too bad. Decent first run. Let's get outy. We're gonna have to grind, guys. Nine, three. God, I would be so excited about that money in Pitch Black Dungeon. Claire, I'm really curious how the hell that's gonna play. Scientific! Divine Grace minus 20% healing received. Divine Comfort. Minus 20% healing received. Scientific. Resilient. I kind of like that. Scientific is interesting. Satanophobia on Kick the Habit. That's not wonderful, because we're going to probably use you in the ruins a decent amount. Fast healer. Skill-related quirks. Once our estate was the envy of this land. How what's going to play? Sorry, Claire, I was thinking about uh, economy in Moonlit Dungeon as compared to what we're used to in Pitch Black Dungeon. Because the economy in base game is hitting me really hard right now. It just feels very, very base game. Which is at which it should, right? Let's see what's in here. Uh, we got our first Town Master. Armor Tinker. Daredevil. Plus 15 dodge of HP below 25%. That's interesting. Blackjack is now 110% uh, base, and as we saw in the patch notes, uh, Release the Hound is down from 50% to a 30% scouting chance, which is significant. 
but still really powerful. I think that's the biggest change, right? It's like, Release the Hound got nerfed. Cry Havoc is a 66% chance of minus stress 2. Blackjack's stun chance is down. And I think that's it. Oh, look at this. Rallying Flare. Torch plus 3. Other heroes, clear stun marked, but minus stress. 60% chance. So... Was there... Did Rallying Flare always have a stress reduction mechanic? I can't remember that. That seems sort of new to me. Heal 2 to 3. Uh, you guys will have to clarify this for me, but I think Battlefield Bandage for the Arbalist can now heal any position, right? Making this a much more versatile healer. Um, can it heal self, though? Like, we've always had problem. Oh, God. Compulsive Fear of Eldritch. Ugh. We're going to take Herbert in, but we kind of need to get Herbert cleaned up. Fear of Unholy is not fun either, but that's okay. Does anybody have an Arbalist Shoot. or Houndmaster? And pillage. The dancing steps of war. Claire says, yes, it can self-heal now. And Poke confirms, uh, it didn't have that before. Crazy. It can heal any rank. Uh... Upgrade your stagecoach to four heroes per week. God, thank you, Poke. Yes, let's do that right now. Uh, let's get the stagecoach network up. We're Absolutely, coming. let's do that. We'll get the Everything barracks up pretty soon, too. In distant cities. And we are right at the cusp, I think, of venturing into the farmstead for the first time. So we are playing for the first time in maybe ever a completely modless vanilla play here. Uh, just to feel the changes and the differences with the new DLC, and we're about to go into the farmstead. I think what people have suggested is that we make sure we take a group that is sustainable and has high DPS and has at least level 2 armor and weapons. So that's what we've done. We've done a money run. We have now uh, unlocked the blacksmith for the most part so that we could take, say, the warp lord and buy uh, all, the all the bills to, to pay the skills, essentially, right? That way we get, uh, we get Warp Lord, two and two, and then, uh, and then we upgrade some of these main abilities, and I think that's what we take. I'm not sure what actually works really, really well. Uh, we're gonna take a look at these characters in a second, too. But if I think about what we take into the farmstead, the honest answer, guys, is I have absolutely no idea. I don't know if it's weak to blight or bleed. I don't know if it rotates on you. I think that the way that this works from my ob observation watching Dolphin Chemist and Filthy Robot and some of the other guys play this is that you run into waves of different enemies from all the different dungeons, and as well as the crystalline enemies. So uh, I'm just thinking about an overall uh, a group, an over, an overall versatile group here that has heals, self heals, stuns, etc. An ability to reach back line, maybe marks. So kick the habit, I think, is going to be the heals for this group, guys. And ultimately, I think we we want to get both of these unlocked. And then we're going to make sure that kick the habit has judgment, and then leveled up stuffs, right? At least this stuff. Um. My thinking is it's probably never going to be rank rank one or two. It's probably doing the standard play here, which for money's sake, I think works pretty well. So, pretty well. so we go kick the habit. This is at 24, and these two are upgraded, and that's half the team. So if Treasy comes along, now we have a Plague Doctor. The Plague Doctor is great because we'll have a cure. We'll have blight mechanics. We'll have stun. Uh, we could remove disease if we really need to. Again, I don't know the the viability of camping skills on this play, but let me just think about the group for a second, because, um, I mean, is Anya going to be our front line here and we just go with the red hook, or do we take Vec and have stuns as well as a backline Iron Swan, or do we take Warp Lord and have heals plus Exang, uh, plus Stress Soak, etc. Save the money if you don't need to spend. Yeah, I thank you, Akale. Snake dreams today. I'm not sure, Amuli. Uh, it'll just, it just depends on how this run goes. Uh, I was kind of hoping that maybe we could bring the Shield Breaker to the farmstead, but without knowing how this goes and if we face a Snake Dream, I think we go for something a little more standard. Leper seems like super hard hitting. Since you can literally go forever, Jester. I kind of like the Leper up front. That is kind of interesting. Ambiguous 
The Leper's changed now, guys, because it has revenge for this battle long buff, which gives it its accuracy and crit. If it crits, it gets more accuracy. It has the self heals. It hits really hard up front as long as we hit something. So this seems okay to me. Let's do this up. Let's get at least this stuff up. Revenge, uh, maybe even Purge. Withstand, I think I'm gonna level these up because we'll take them if we need to. Intimidate is a bypass stealth mark self. I don't think we need that yet. Something has fallen from the stars and struck the old mill. Neighbors whisper of twisted vegetation and eerily shifting lights. It is time to survive as long as we can and kill all the enemies. And my guess is you'd want to take as many provisions as possible. Drop shovels. Don't take keys. Okay. Revenge heals. Hugh Chop. Uh, bleeds stuff. Shit, son of a bitch. Sorry, guys. Let's do this instead. Let's move off a of soul train, put this up front, and then we'll go point blank. And then this will come forward, I guess. Let's go, boys. Let's carry this. Let's do it. Pop, 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 pop. Here we go. Blight had struck the harvest again that year, and the miller was desperate. He came to me, hat clutched tightly in filthy fingers, stinking of sweat and manure. Seated comfortably in my observatory, surrounded by telescopes and other delicate apparatus, I recognized his misfortune as an opportunity, and I agreed to lend him my expertise. <laughs> Expertise. I love that. You gotta love the Wayne June. Look at how awesome this is. <laughs> You're dead, Zero. <laughs> Thank you, Cell. Good luck and let's crit them. You said it on you. Here we go, guys. Let's just appreciate this for a second. GG! Thank you, Doom. Look at how beautiful this is. How gorgeous is this screen? Let's go. Central fixture is carefully constructed barrier around the farm strat around the farmstead. Breach the barrier. Onward. Love it. Absolutely love it. So they're actually they're kind of changing colors, aren't they? Like I'm looking for a fixes or something kind of unique about these. Uh, but all of these are just sort of changing colors. We have the kill meter up here as well. And then the farmstead's miasma. Hero party effects, minus 10% healing received, plus 10% stress. Son of a bitch. Absolutely anti-stall. Yeah, Gemma says mouse over the torch. You said it, yeah. Taking bets on who's going to die first, I call plague doctor, says Cell. Son of a bee. All of these guys have 20% stun resist. 50% Blight, 20% Speed, uh, sorry, 20% Bleed Resist, Debuff, and 10% Move Resist. So for the most part, they are Blight Resistant above anything else. That's what they are. Both landed. Destroyed. Uh... They're, they're blight resistant among anything else. They're weaker to bleed. Akil says, no, it's bleed. Sick dodges. Sick dodges. That's what we want. I think maybe we buff revenge here on a longer fight, but right now we have the ability to crush. Seeds of Madness. 
200% stun resist, zero blight resist, 100% bleed resist. So we gotta clear this now, right? These are husks. So they're not corpses. Right? If I clear corpses, these things aren't going away. Buff leper next turn. Gotcha. Shogex loads gun. <laughs> Uh, I think- I think we get really punished by these if we don't clear them. Am I wrong about that? Are the living enemies corpses- well, they say hus, they don't look like enemies to me. Okay, okay. I'm with you. HP 5. Another abomination. Cleansed from our okay, lives. we got stress. No, no, we got stress heal for the crit, but we got healed for killing it. Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. So actually, killing that had benefit for us. That's awesome. The plow horse. Uh, I saw filthy dealing with this thing over and over last night. 50% stun resist. These guys are 20. Um... 50% stun versus 110. Shadowmere, says Amuli. Yeah. We could take- we could take a chance on stunning this. That wouldn't be bad, because these guys are gonna rail this front line. I think you're right. We gotta- we need to buff revenge on this. I should have done that, like, right off the bat. The thing is, if I Noxious Blast this, this dies. Uh, but we're gonna- we're gonna hew. I could- I could wait a turn and not hew. This has 20% Blight Resist, okay. The horse is a horse, of course it's coarse. Thank you, Magnet. <laughs> It's Mr. Dead. I love it. You guys are awesome. Okay, we're gonna buff revenge. We can only do this once a battle. 27% damage now. Two and three. I almost want a grape shot, finally. Decimated. Oh, guys, this is fun. This is too exciting. It's less fun, suddenly. Oh, crit! Habit! So what does Habit get? 25% healing skills. Love it. So now we're gonna get punished by the stealth here. Oh! Okay, okay. Not lovely. Um... Do I spin this turn to shuffle back before this dies? What I could do is I could go... Uh... Let the Blight sit on this thing? Um... I think we're okay here, actually. If I come back and then come back, we're in a pretty good position. Yeah, because we have Duelist Advance here. That's it, man. It's game over, man. It's game over! It's game over! <laughs> Thank you, Cell. Yeah, was that stalling? I don't know if that was stalling. The thing is, this is dead to lethal, so it's not- it shouldn't be considered- This is- this is dead to blight, to a dot, so it shouldn't be considered stalling, is the point. Stalling doesn't exist in this mode. Thank you, Battle Candle. Just size alone does not dissuade the sharpened blade. Thirty-nine, forty-two, twenty-five, twenty-eight. Get crushed. A victory, perhaps the turning point. Look at that, guys! Look at the buffs here. Twenty-seven percent damage, accuracy, crit, accuracy, freaking great. 
We got a Scarecrow. 60% stun resist, 25% blight, 200% bleed resist because, you know, it's wood. Interesting. This is cloaked as well. So bringing some sort of anti-stealth would have been probably preferable here. I didn't think about the fact that stealth was going to be a mechanic in this that we dealt with on the secret level. Random thing, the enemy types are no longer all capitalized. Interesting, Gemma. Eradicated. Shield breaker is going to be really, uh, really good too. Yeah. Festering fear. Well, that's why we wanted to bring Laudanum, correct? Maybe that was a bit premature, actually. Yeah, I feel like we're just- we're getting stress hit now. Oh yeah, baby. I think I'm sitting up front until I really want to just blow something away. Must says, I just realized Red Hook added tooltips for HP sack, which makes me happy with Tifa. That's great. Slowly, gently, this is how a life is taken. Now what do we got? The Foreman. Ten percent blight skill chance, fifty percent blight duration when applied. Plus three speed. So this is why we took cure. This has repost on it. Um, the foreman seems like a nasty target we want to get rid of here. George is gonna grill ya. <laughs> nice magnet. Six to eleven. So the question, guys, is: Do I want to take away the buffed blighter reposter, or do I want to blow away his friend here? and then hew them both. I think that's maybe the call. If I can get a stun in on this too, it won't repost this next hit. Boy, maybe we go here, because we're going to hew... Landed that, that's excellent. As the fiend falls. Hello, leper! Welcome back to Darkest Dungeon. I'm gonna uh just for this moment, guys, we're gonna take the chat down since it's kind of covering some of this gameplay. I'm gonna have to figure out how we deal with that. Five to nine. Do I come back up here? Put it on the other side? Yeah, maybe that's the way to do it. I feel like I'm misplaying this because I need to get these dead and I'm sort of relying on Hugh to do it. Another one falls. And that's maybe not the smartest thing with something that's weak accuracy. Stun resist 20%. Move chat to left side behind the Plague Doctor. <laughs> uh, let me play with it for a second, guys. I know that a lot of you love it. How does that work? Still kind of a bit in the way. Can you miss a corpse? Yeah, you can absolutely miss a corpse. If you wear a green beanie, you can remove the bit cup. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a lot of things we could do. But for now, we're going to keep it off. Oh, 
I think we want to target the foreman here. Light bleed stun, that's pretty good. Four plus two uh, times two means this should die. That was maybe a bit dangerous. We're going to uh, toss a coin on this stun. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. Bestial scream. Thank you for that. Move him back too and then come forward? Yeah, because we have illumination here. So... This is the funny thing though, is that like, even though that breaks stealth and that's great, getting a heal here is probably better. Um, how bad is this? Two over three? I think I'd rather do the damage than get the cure, but I worry about not catching up on damage since we didn't heal. This, I think I'm taking way too long on, by the way. Did the leper's accuracy get buffed? Yeah, Magnet, it's interesting because the leper, when the leper crits, it gets plus accuracy buffed, but also they changed its primary, uh, one of its primary abilities, Revenge, to buff self once throughout the whole battle for 20% damage, accuracy, and crit, which makes this just feed itself as a much more sustainable class. It's still not going to reach a backline, right? Um, but it makes it so much more viable, I think. I just want to hew these one more time, I think. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Oh, God. Do we get punished by that now? That's the question. Did these things just kill me? Here comes their turns. Oh, 11 damage, son of a bitch. Sixteen non-crit. Okay. Plus two over three. All right, so that's what happens if you don't take those out. Wow. Oh shit. The slow death unforeseen. Stop it. <laughs> Stop. It's a bumble flashback suddenly. Maybe I stun this and take its turn away. We get a heal in here. Not killing, you guys. That miss on those corpses set all of this in motion. That's not good. The flesh is knit. Eight to 16, 83% chance to hit. Be wary. Triumphant pride precipitates a dizzying fall. Okay. Not too bad. G G. <laughs> Thank you for the GG's. Thank you for putting up with the chat box. That's going to be an interesting thing I have to solve now. Woot woot! Ladies and gentlemen, we are on the board. <laughs> 20 kills!